Guys, got a little bit of an issue. And Scotty, I think, lost his high beam. You will learn why we end up unexpectedly at Kingfisher Bay Resort again and whether I have a new career as a hair model. So I'm just leaving beautiful um, Kingfisher Bay Resort. Scotty uh, left last night and stayed with his brother on the east coast i'm heading up to the east coast now catching up with scotty again we'll see how that goes because uh tide um, is one hour before high tide so i'll probably take the inland treks to happy valley and um, yeah then we head to another spot which one of my local contacts gave me here where i haven't been so keen to see how that goes yeah, I'm a bit under time pressure here. The tide is coming in and I need to catch up with Scotty, who is still roughly an hour away. So I'm racing and trying to beat the tide. Ideally, obviously, you time your tides a bit different, but you didn't have a chance now. When you're driving here on the beach, especially when the tide comes in, some of the washouts are really quite dangerous. So reduce your speed and uh, there are often steps which you really see only the last second however if you're driving you have moderate speed and you see a big dip in front of you or washout brake but before you hit the washout definitely release the brakes because when you hit the brakes your suspension compresses and if you keep your foot on the brake that means you hit this washout with compressed suspension which can't really do its job and that will cause damage to your vehicle. Shortly after recording this, I missed a double washout and got airborne twice. Um, so I really did not follow my own advice here and I paid the bill for that. Uh, I did some flying here. I wonder if I haven't done any damage to suspension. Okay, beach. How are you? That's what I need. I was supposed to catch up with Scotty at the Orchid Beach uh, trading store. However, he was nowhere to be seen. So I thought I'd drive up the coast a little bit and see whether I can collect him somewhere and whether he maybe is somewhere on the beach and is going for a swim. I had no luck uh, locating Scotty, so I started the fair drive to catch up hopefully with him at our end location for the day. It's another pretty hard day at the office here with Scotty. Oh, terrible. Terrible. You know, I really got to complain that sand is too white and that water is too green. I've got a further complaint. Yeah. It's squeechy sand, it's huh? It's really sand. Yes. Yeah, well, guys, got a little bit of an issue. Um, trying to race up here, catch up with Scotty and having the tide against me and I'm really, uh, yeah, I don't want to drive through salt water and there's not that much beach left at high tide. So I drove too fast, you know, exactly what I preach not to do. And uh, missed one of the washouts and really had a good fly all four wheels in the air, I reckon. I obviously didn't see it. 
Fortunately, suspension and everything good, um, took that all well, but I continued on driving slowly and started smelling diff oil. So I caught up with Scotty now and had a look and I have cracked my front um, axle housing, the laminated axle housing. And it is exactly cracked where it's not laminated. It's not from what we can see it's a pretty shitty spot to see actually right where the control arms connect um, yeah it looks like a very small little crack but again super hard to see there it's certainly weeping and uh, yeah and i'm stuck in paradise frustrating i feel so upset for stefan like he's gone to the hassle of laminating his front diff and it looks like a really good job, but um, you can definitely smell that diff oil. And upon inspection, we found uh, where the radius arm connects underneath. So here's your diff housing. You can laminate all this bit, but where your radius arm connects to the front axle housing, um, you obviously can't laminate there. Actually, you can laminate there, but it means you need to cut off all bracketing, then do the laminating and then re-weld all bracketing. Now I will get custom housings which are made from scratch and that will never happen again. You can just see through a tiny little crack, there's a crack about that big and that's where it's weeping from. So I was just saying to him before that it was two nights, three, maybe three nights ago, I was doing some photography up at the Mahino. Um, the tide was coming up so I was in the non-optimal zone for driving and just cased the front of the car really hard out of something that I didn't expect. It was just you know, uh, polarized sunglasses I always wear when driving on the beach so you can you, you get a lot more clarity and you can see ahead it was at that point of night where you know I had them off and it was everything looked the same I was driving slowly but still this little thing I don't know maybe about a foot and a half deep caught me out and just cased the front of the car into it just boom and yeah it's that's Fraser you know you can never go too slow <laughs> But you've got to get places. If you're eating up kilometres to get up to the top end, you, you, you can't do 40 kilometres an hour. Yeah, look, I'm not too gutted, um, to be honest. I mean, been there before, obviously not with a broken axle housing, but with stuff. Shit happens. The car has had a pretty hard last year with canning, desert trips, and at times I had to push it a bit. So it is what it is. So I reckon latest tomorrow morning we're going to make our way out of here and I've certainly got to go slow and guys I usually drive slow I'm, honestly if I drive over 40 on the beach usually doesn't happen I can verify that <laughs> yeah I know it annoys him that I drive too slow um, yeah so you know that that happens when you try to push it and and uh, really break your own rules um, anyway it is what it is guys so we'll see and uh, let's see whether I can drive home with it uh, but I need on the hoist someone really proper look at it with a torch and the whole thing uh, up and then we will see but yeah all good all part of the adventure you know stuff does happen and absolute stunning that sand and the sand is similar to Lake Mackenzie yeah? it's so squishy and fine Hey guys, I thought I'd do a very quick review. I purchased it actually in Alice Springs in the desert, what's it called, Scotty? Desert Dwellers, desert at the Desert Dwellers, Aqua Pack Shower. And I've used it on the canning and I really love it. Uh, it's pretty much lithium ion powered, so you can charge it with any USB charger. And we are here on a pristine beach where we don't have any fresh water. So, I don't like the salt water on my skin, dry and so on. So I'm gonna have a quick shower. I've got one of the Jerry's just for water and for that 
the purpose. So that jerry can probably gives me, and I'm generous here, gives me four or five showers, I reckon. I just hope it's charged. I haven't used it since the canning. So let's see. It does. So you just chuck it in here. And oh, it's warm. <laughs> So usually I would leather up now, put soap on, obviously we don't do that here. Pristine nature. Uh, $70 I think it was. Can only highly recommend it. Yeah, we decided uh, make our way towards Kingfisher for an early leave tomorrow to sort out the cracked axle housing. Um, yeah, it's leaking, it's weeping. I mean, I, I should be all right getting there, but again, we can't really see whether there is more damage. I don't want to have the wheel uh, falling off. So we want to get as uh, close as we can. I just had a guy nearly t-boning me obviously on the beach here I've got my indicator um, towards the left and I'm driving close to the water's edge on the left hand side so the oncoming traffic really should drive a bit higher up and the guy comes towards me and pretty much drives left uh, of my side here which would be through the water and nearly t-bones me um, so make sure that your indicator is running to the side where you're gonna drive so I'm gonna drive on the water's edge to the left so my indicator is going to the left and um, yeah normal road road rules you know speak oh, to him he nearly in full-on collision yes, he did the same with me. and then finally I turned around chased him chased him down pulled up he hit the brakes I put my my man's on behind him until he stopped. And then he swerved, like as I'm braking, he tried to swerve left to create a collision. And I just avoided that. He's got kids crying in the car. So what the f are you doing, dude? What the hell is your problem? He said, are you going to go home, mum? I said, no, do not. I said, look at this. We're both pointing the same way. I said, you turn your light, your light on. Here's my normal high beam. What's different? You know, I couldn't do that, dude. I said, well, that's your problem, mate. We're both got the lights of the same strength. You're a f***ing idiot. You, you never, you do not swerve in front of someone, eh? Hey? You do not f***ing try to... Mate, he swerved in front of me, eh? Hey? It's like he was trying to go kamikaze. It's probably hard to see, but we have all the sea spray. There's a very strong um, onshore wind, and that... Um, still bloody steering over that sea that just drove in front of us, both. Rocky, that's so wrong. And he had kids in the car, you know. That's just disgusting behaviour. Yeah, well, disgusting. That's freaking dangerous. That is really dangerous. That's, yeah, anyway. I'm just glad I have that ultra vision. That's high beam of my upgraded headlights. Um, they have LEDs in but uh, yeah it's not that much now we have the ultra vision on so uh, seems to be a loose in my top light bar so I can't run that uh, I have to check that out tomorrow yeah, but that's somewhere in the cabling and yeah that makes a, obviously quite a difference here from this to this happens together as usual I'm smelling diff oil here <laughs> and uh, it's 9 30 or so at night 
and Scotty, I think, lost his high beam. Scotty, do you copy? You want me to come back? Uh, no, I'm just hang loose, mate. Give me a minute, so I'll see what's happening. So you have no lights at all? Uh, yeah, I'm down to driving lights, which isn't handy at all. Oh, your lights going, mate? You're rolling again? Yeah, about to be, mate. I haven't sorted the problem. Um, I'm going to get rolling. I'll be a lot slower than you. Just stick behind me and, uh, I mean, you see when I brake and so on. Yeah, yeah. Now these inland tracks are pretty rough and uh, I don't want to increase the crack in the housing. At the moment there's a constant slight drip, but it should get me to Kingfisher um, and then over to Harvey Bay tomorrow. But um, yeah, I, I certainly don't want to um, increase that uh, fracture. So I'm taking it fairly slow and uh, crawling up these little obstacles which usually we can drive here at a reasonable speed. Hi guys, just uh, arrived now here at Kingfisher again. Um, pretty grateful that uh, they gave us a room, correct axle housing for me. Um, Scotty lost his lights, couldn't unlock his hubs, uh, but that the hubs are fixed fortunately. Uh, the lights not yet um, Yeah, but Haven't had dinner. I'm looking forward to the brekkie, which is pretty yummy and uh, Shower good night's sleep So Kingfisher Bay Resort they have a car wash here. I mean nothing too fancy, but a hose and clean water uh, cost four bucks for six minutes So I definitely give it an original clean because you can see a lot of sand still stuck everywhere. Give that an original rinse. Hello well, guys, here with Scotty from Southern Sky Images and we finished up over a week on Fraser with some of the worst weather and conditions you can imagine. Even on the way here we had tons of rain, pretty much two days driving through permanent rain. And before we left, we both treated our underbody with Lennox, which is a lanolin-based um, lubricant and rust protection. Good stuff right here. That is this. Yeah, to be honest, I personally had a doubt how long that will last, especially as quite a few people on the internet said, oh, it washes off and so on. But I'm thoroughly surprised. I mean, we host our car down here now and you see where that Lennox was applied. The water is all purling off. Um, so that's my take on it. Scotty? Yeah, so like Stefan, I applied the, uh, the Lennox product uh, before coming up. Um, so I was like, I actually applied it at Coffs and spent a day driving through rain uh, straight after that to get here onto the island. Uh, this is the first time I've been on Fraser Day where I've actually had a look and washed underneath and all the shiny bits of bits of menopy shiny are still in fact shiny and not looking orange so uh, I've got to say pretty happy with it so far it looks like it's you know done the job really well no rust at all underneath everything still looks nice and black um, oiled up you, you could say although it isn't oily um, one of the things I was concerned about was sand and things like that you know a bit of grime getting stuck onto parts um, moving parts but that appears not to be the case. I've just had a quick look underneath and we can show you now um, after a quick hose down, looks good. Yeah, and I have to say we, we both applied it a little bit different. I did it a week before, which is recommended. So it had plenty of time uh, to dry. Scotty didn't have the time. So he pretty much applied it two days before. Um, but both of us, we don't have sand stuck in it. Um, and yeah, it, it is obviously an oil, so you, you have a little bit of an of an oily feel, but stuff doesn't stick to it, at least not um, how we let it dry. And obviously on your way here, you have a lot of rain. Yeah. There wouldn't have been any dust or so in the air. So pretty good. So let's have a look at uh, Scotty's car. So in the past, I've got a lot of rust, places like here, bolts, high tensile bolts. Um, yeah, just any sort of anything that's not factory coated generally ends up with a, a rusty sheen, particularly the shocks as well, the struts on the shocks, um, which I did oil up with the Lennox. Um, obviously that's gonna 
you know, sort of wear off with the wiper seals. But overall, look, I can't see any single evidence of rust anywhere. So, you know, I gave it a good coating and it's done the job well. I've got to say, I'm pretty impressed actually. Yeah, I, I reckon though, if you look under mine, it pays to do it earlier and let it dry. Um, go and have a look. You know, everywhere where it pearls and you see it shiny, even the radius arms now, now they dried off a bit, but really you saw it pearling everywhere. So, yeah. Yeah, look, my conclusion is, um, it doesn't last forever, that's for sure, but for a trip like this, putting that on for probably around a hundred bucks, I think that's well worth it. Anything what I can do to help uh, rust protection, um, I'm gonna do. So yeah, for me, no brainer. Um, before any trip where I'm exposed to sand with salt water and so on, I'm gonna put that Lennox on and it's 45 minutes at home. I somehow didn't have Scotty on the list there, so just managed to squeeze him in there. Just got off the ferry and I got to be driving now. I think it's raw mechanical here in Harvey Bay. They agreed to have a look there and see how the axle looks. And yeah, whether anything else, I have a slight vibration here, so I don't know, it may have been something else, but yeah, we'll see. And hopefully I can get that patch at least to drive home, and then uh, I was thinking uh, for an Excel upgrade anyway, so maybe it's time to do that now. Mind you, I do not think I, that's gonna ever happen again, so yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, thankfully these guys have a quick look, see whether we can put some netted on and uh, keep it dry so that I can drive home with it. Um, we'll see. Yeah, I'm just in front of Superpack here on the Gold Coast and that's a pretty big company, pretty big warehouse. Um, yeah, when I can, I always like to support Australian products. And yeah, Superpack really, I uh, had my eye on them for quite some time now after reading a review from my good mate Scott Mason uh, who worked for Pat Callahan's magazine and he did a comparison of three 270 degree wing awnings. I also had a good look around on the last uh, four wheel drive show in Sydney and really checked out all the awnings and the Super Peg really was the one who seemed to fit me the best. So I was quite stoked when they um, contacted me probably six months ago and asked me whether I want to test their product. So I've got the easy awning on my vehicle for six months now, which replaced my aging um, yeah, cheapy I had on there and I'm very happy with that. So after seeing Scott's 270 Super Pack now on Fraser and having the pain of packing in that Foxwing every day and setting it up with side awnings and so on, I have to pretty much get my, uh, rem not remove my seats, but uh, because I have stuff on my seats, move the seats forward, get to the poles. Uh, the setup is less than ideal. So yeah, not, not such a big fan of it, except that it's fairly light. So I'm really looking forward now to test that Super Pack uh, 270 um, because I'm very impressed with the Easy Awning. Australian made canvas, uh, very good quality uh, poles and so on. Fine little details, you can pack down the poles. So I really like that. Let's see how the 270 goes. This was the final episode of our Fraser Island adventure. I hope you enjoyed the ride as much as we did. If you like to support me, it would be greatly appreciated to shout me a cup of coffee or two by becoming my Patreon supporter. 
This will help me to stay independent and make these videos for you. Otherwise, please also don't forget to share, like, subscribe and leave me a comment in the comment section. Have we missed anything on Fraser? Thanks a lot for watching. I hope to catch up with you one day on the tracks.